Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about health savings accounts. What are they, who qualifies for them, why they're so amazing, and if you stick around till the end of the video, two really unique and incredible benefits to HSAs. HSAs have been called the IRAs of healthcare or even the super IRA. And real quick, a recap. If you contribute to a traditional IRA, this is pre-tax income, meaning you're getting a tax break this year. What happens or grows in the account grows tax-free. You then agree to pay taxes on the withdrawals after the age of 59 and a half. Now for a Roth IRA, you're not getting any tax savings this year for contributing to the account. But whatever happens in the account, it grows tax-free. You then get to withdraw after the age of 59 and a half anything in the Roth IRA 100% tax-free. And let's just do a quick numbers example because I think traditional 401ks and traditional IRAs really do confuse people how they're saving on their taxes this year. So let's just do a quick numbers example. Let's assume that your gross annual income was $62,400. The standard deduction that everyone gets to claim is $12,400. So your taxable income to the federal government is $50,000. So I, I, look, I looked on the 1040 table, what is the exact dollar amount, and you would owe 6,864 in federal income tax. However, what if you contributed $6,000 to a traditional 401k or a traditional IRA, you get to subtract 6,000 from your taxable income. So check the table again, your federal income tax owed would be 5,544, you saved 1,320 on your taxes, taxes this year if you contributed to a traditional IRA or 401k. And HSAs are the same. If you contribute to an HSA this year, it lowers your taxable income and you pay less in federal taxes. So it's pre-tax income, that's what that means. Then anything that grows inside of the account grows tax-free year to year. And then you can withdraw anything from the account, once again, tax-free, as long as it is a qualified medical expense. This is why HSAs are called the triple tax advantaged account. Uh, you know, tax, tax savings, tax-free, tax-free. HSAs are pretty incredible. And who is eligible to open an HSA? It's anybody with a high deductible healthcare plan. The IRS defines a high deductible as being greater than $1,400 for the year for a single person or $2,800 for a family. Now, if you're not familiar with America's healthcare system or you just don't understand it, it's, it's very confusing. Let's just break down the two things you need to know. Your deductible is what you must pay before your insurance contributes to the costs. So if I'm in a bicycle accident and I break my leg and the hospital sends me a bill for $10,000 and my deductible is $1,400, I have to pay $1,400 first. Then my health insurance, ideally, will cover the next uh, $8,600. Now your premium is your monthly insurance plan cost. This is what you're paying every month to be insured. So who are high deductible healthcare plans ideally good for? And it's good for very healthy people, people who never go to the hospital, never see doctors. They just wanna save as much as they can on their premiums so they're not worried about the high deductible should something you know, terrible happen. As long as they're catastrophically covered, they feel secure uh, with a high deductible because they don't go to the hospital that much. The other category of people who benefit from high deductible uh, healthcare plans are very sick people. These are people who know they're going to be going to the doctor a lot and they're going to have a lot of medical bills. They know they're gonna blow through that high deductible immediately and then their health, uh, health insurance provider is gonna to have to cover the rest if there's a lot in a single year. So at its core, an HSA is just a buffer bank account for medical costs. Because medical costs are getting kind of out of control, this is something that the government created to help people. And it's just tax-free money to pay medical bills. You get tax savings this year, and then if you can invest it wisely uh, and grow it as much as you can, you don't have to pay taxes on the growth. And when you use the money, you don't have to pay taxes if you use it for medical expenses. 
it covers your family. If, if it's an HSA uh, and you have, you have a family, you can cover uh, children or, 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 or dependents. There is no income limitation. So for a Roth IRA, if you earn more than a certain amount, you actually can't contribute to a Roth IRA, but there is no I income limitation on an HSA. Your money is also there forever. It doesn't matter if you lose your job or switch your job, that is your personal HSA account. So it doesn't matter if you become self-employed or what you do in the future, uh, it's your money forever. However, if you have one of these high deductible plans through your employer, definitely ask your employer if they recommend or have an HSA matching amount for contributions. This is becoming a new, really good benefit. So like a 401k match, uh, if your employer offers any kind of HSA matching, definitely take it. That's free money that you definitely will use at some point in the future. Uh, if you can also set up payroll deductions from your check in order to auto deposit into your HSA, that might uh, help you budget for the year so that you're always contributing. Definitely check with your employer to see if they have an HSA that they recommend and that they work with, but definitely investigate if that HSA provider is offering you a good uh, expense ratio for their services. If you're not satisfied, you definitely can partner with a private bank. I always recommend either Vanguard, Fidelity, or Schwab. They have no account minimums, no hidden fees. Their expense ratio and all their funds are excellent. And what are the contribution limits? Well, for 2021, a person just on their own with an HSA can contribute up to $3,550 a year. If you have a family, you can contribute up to $7,100. And if you're over the age of 55, uh, for both those categories, you can kick in an extra thousand a year. Now I've just done some simple numbers and if you invest in a simple low cost S&P 500 index funds within your HSA, you can do pretty well. So if you look at this uh, compound interest calculator, if you're maxing out your HSA every year at 7,100, at 20 years at 9.8%, you'd, you'd have over $400,000 in the account uh, should you start accumulating massive medical bills. And what exactly is a qualified medical expense? Well, if you're looking for something specific, definitely Google it uh, or ask your healthcare provider what is a qualified medical expense for an HSA distribution. This is a not inclusive list, uh, A through L. Things that jump out to me that everyone spends money on is uh, dental services, that qualifies, you can do that today eyeglasses, contacts, birth control, prescriptions. So if you were to get an HSA, for example, with Fidelity, Fidelity would just give you a debit card uh, directly linked to your H HSA. And then it's as simple as just swiping your debit card whenever you make a qualified medical expense to uh, debit from the account. However, what if you want that money for something that isn't a qualified medical expense? What happens then? Well, this is very bad because if you take out money to, I don't know, uh, start a business or buy a house, then you're gonna have to pay regular income tax on that distribution plus a 20% penalty to the government. So you definitely don't wanna do that. Now, what happens when you turn age 65? At age 65, you qualify for Medicare. These uh, seniors are all very happy because they've officially qualified for Medicare. So what happens after the age of 65 is you will just have to pay ordinary income tax on distributions if it's for retirement purposes. So once you hit age 65, if you wanna take money out of an HSA, not for a medical expense, you can do that but you have to pay regular income tax. There won't be a penalty, that's, that's the good part. And really, when you think about it, it just becomes a traditional IRA. Uh, for a traditional IRA, you got the tax savings the year you contributed, and then when you go to pull it out, you agreed to pay ordinary income tax. That's what happens to an HSA over the age of 65. However, what if you die? Uh, definitely a possibility. Well, it's just like any other retirement account or IRA, you would name a beneficiary. The HSA then transfers to that beneficiary and can be treated like a ordinary IRA. Okay, two things about HSAs you're definitely gonna wanna know is the first is you can reimburse yourself for medical debt at any time. The way the law is written, there is no requirement that for medical costs incurred this year, 
to reimburse yourself from your HSA this year. People have figured this out. So with any uh, retirement account or investment account, the longer you can give that money inside there to grow year to year tax free, the more you'll have in the future. So people have figured this out. And right now there are people saving their receipts for any medical expenses that they've incurred. And their plan is when they officially go to retire, they're then going to show those receipts and uh, reimburse themselves and then use that money in the future to uh, live on or, or do whatever they want when they're retired. But it's great because uh, if you were to take a distribution this year, then you're not giving yourself that time for your investment to grow. Uh, so this is, this, is, this is an incredible benefit to the HSA if you use it correctly. The other interesting thing about HSAs is they've allowed for one-time transfers from an IRA to an HSA. So because HSAs are much newer than IRAs, when they wrote this law, they allowed people just one time uh, to transfer a sum of money from their IRA to their HSA to kind of kickstart it and get it going. Now, in my opinion, doing this with a Roth IRA probably isn't a good idea because you've already guaranteed that what you take out of the Roth IRA will be tax-free. However, if you were to do this with a traditional IRA, in my opinion, that would be beneficial. With a traditional IRA, you already got the tax savings when you contributed, and if you switch it to your HSA and use it for medical expenses, then you don't have to pay taxes uh, when you take it out. Whereas if it was in a traditional IRA, you would have to do that. Final thing I want to emphasize about HSAs is they are not savings accounts. Uh, I, I think there are a lot of people out there just treating it like a savings account. You put money in, you save a little bit on taxes, and then you use your HSA card for all of your medical expenses. You definitely can do that, but it is a brokerage account. It is an investment account. So as long as you, uh, this, this goes beyond the scope of this video, watch more videos to research in greater detail how you should invest that money in your HSA. But if done correctly, you can amass a great fortune in there. Okay guys, there you have it. That is why the HSA is called sometimes the super IRA. It's pretty impressive to think about. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. In addition, consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I talk about finance and investing topics. And if you have any comments or questions, leave me one down below. I'll try and help you if I can. And until the next video, take care.